Hello, hello. Hello and welcome back. Uh, today I was really craving uh, putting a video out onto YouTube only for YouTube to tell me that it didn't do as well as my last video. So that's really exciting. And uh, last time I told you I would show you some photos from a trip I took to France. Uh, and I'm gonna come through on that promise because that's me, Myla, two of our friends, Sven and Rosette, took a green van from Eindhoven. It's a well-known city in the Netherlands. We took it from there. We drove through Belgium straight to Versailles and then started a 10 day road trip around like the north of France. Uh, pretty amazing. So, so we were in this van for 10 days and in keeping with most of my work, um, as it was my home, I took a lot of photos of the van. We chose it for its green color and for all the problems that it gave us, um, I think you got to be happy with a green van in photos. It's uh, like, for example, this photo of Sven, uh, it's a thinking photo. It's a photo of thinking. Sven is a thinker, philosopher, as they say. Um, and they're on their phone thinking. And I was thinking when I was taking the photo, I was thinking about photo. <laughs> it's amazing to take photos in blue hour just after the sun goes away. And especially when you have lights at your disposal, like I have the lights of the van that I can use and do whatever I want with, which means that I can, you know, I can put the lights on and then wait for the light to get perfect, then take the photo. I'm not rushed, just a beautiful moment, beautiful time and an easy way to make beautiful photos is to just be calm and think about it for a while. We left Versailles and we drove from there straight to uh, Mont Saint-Michel, which is like a Hogwarts type Scott castle. It looks like the Disney thing. And we witnessed this amazing sunset over the castle and over the ocean in the distance, and then got to check out the castle, which was pretty crazy. I, I think stuff like this doesn't exist in Australia. There's nothing so old that is like a, a built structure in that same way. Uh, straight after that, we drove to this like beach area, this beach town, Plevenon, I think it was called. And we stayed there for five days because we loved it so much. Uh, we had this nice campsite and a cool campground. It was super relaxing, uh, reminded me a lot of home, you know, just hanging out near the beach, camping. I was kind of in, in like a heaven type of vibe because I had five days then to take photos of this place which meant that I had five days to think about these photos and, and repeat myself, which has become a really integral part of my process is repeating myself and repeating the same photos, mostly to see like different lighting, but also different seasons and then different emotional states as well with the same subject. So I took a lot of photos of these trees. Uh, I once had, I found this like dude who was fishing out on the rocks and I was kind of afraid to take a photo of him. Uh, and I, I thought like, oh, this is a good frame. So I took it and then I said, well, maybe I should get closer. So I went a bit closer and I go, okay, okay, maybe this is the good frame. And I got, and I took the photo again and I was like, basically psych myself up to go and ask to take a proper portrait of this dude. Uh, but when I got to him, he was younger than I expected that like he was a little kid. And I then sort of psyched myself out and felt like it would have been inappropriate of me to take a photo of this kid. So I didn't take the proper portrait that I wanted. Uh, I got some interesting photos anyway, but I think if, if for my mind, all I can think about is the fact that I didn't <laughs> ask for the proper photo. Um, but I'm, I think I made the right choice anyway. I've been wanting to photograph Sven and Rosette together since we got here. Uh, they were the people that got us into Amsterdam. They were uh, our first friends here and the people that we hung out with the most when we first got here. I was really grateful for that and uh, I really liked them. So I, I wanted to take their photo. Uh, we were hanging out on the beach one afternoon and I'm really glad that I got to take this photo. I think it's a beautiful moment uh, and I think it describes their relationship, at least from my perspective in the way that I see it, uh, in a really authentic and, and, and uh, harmless kind of way. Like it's, I feel like sometimes you can make like scary photos of relationships or photos of relationships that might not be going well, but I think theirs is a good relationship in my mind. And uh, I wanted to capture that. I want to show that uh, in a photo. And I think I really got it. 
and I think they were happy with the photo too. Uh, mostly people are if it's a photo of them, but you know, it, it, was, it was nice. It was fun to take that photo. I wish I was a bit closer though. Uh, in my mind, after I took the photo, I, so, I thought about it, you know, as you do for three weeks. And when I saw the photo, I was like, oh, I was way too far away and way further away than I was in my head. So um, maybe that's a good sign to continue to get a bit closer to people for portraits, uh, at least on the RB and definitely, you know, get a bit more intimate and a bit more engaged and like just physically closer would help my photos, I think. Uh, and they had really good bread in Plevenol. So uh, I guess it's France. So like, what do you expect? But Jesus, it was good. It was really good. Yummy bread, which I had a lot of. Uh, we wanted to leave um, Plevenol. And as we turned on the van, turned on the van, uh, we realized it was dead. The battery died, uh, even though we'd been plugged in for four days. Um, this was kind of scary. And without any help from our like supposedly really amazing uh, van people, the people that we rented it from, uh, we had to uh, learn how to like push start this diesel van and learn how to get home uh, you know, we had to take control of the situation and get home ourselves. We had two nights to get back to Eindhoven to drop the van off. Uh, and you know, the fuel gauge was showing half full fuel when it was full. So everything was a little bit stressful. Um, but in that it was really fun as well, because we, we had this goal, we had this task to do. We had two days to get somewhere and we just had to do it ourselves. Like, we were just a team and we had a problem and we had to fix it. And that to me was really satisfying and, and confidence building, I think. So it's also something that I've been thinking about here in Amsterdam is that without my parents being here, um, like usually my parents are the people that would, they would like pick me up if I fall kind of thing. So if I don't know how to do something or I don't like can't do something or I don't want to do something, they would do it for me. But here I, have to do it all for myself which is like it's an idea that's probably as old as um bread but you know i am experiencing it and i like it so for example tomorrow i have a job interview and if i get this job it's going to be a job with like a little bit more uh responsibility than i am used to at work and in the past i've been telling like I make excuses. I've always wanted responsibility and I've wanted to be like looked at and uh, thought of as like a man, like a big, <laughs> like a big strong guy. But it, um, I haven't taken it for myself. And it's very easy for me to blame other people for that, for not having that responsibility that I crave. Um, so I'm excited to be able to get that, get that, you know, have that responsibility and succeed in that responsibility because I think it'll make me stronger and happier. So I'm very excited. Obviously the RB came with a light leak on this occasion, which is pretty devastating, but I sort of knew that it was gonna be happening. Uh, from the Italian film, I knew there was some light leaks in the, in the camera and I'm using the same back. So I knew it was gonna happen. Um, and I just decided to cop it and see what, what it would look like. Sometimes it's disappointing, of course, in some of these photos, but this particular photo of the bin and the chairs, uh, it really works because the cardboard is orange, which sort of makes the whole image feel orange. This blue streak down the side is it's the orange and teal thing, which is always good. And it's always interesting. And I love that. So I'm sure lots of people love that as well. Um, but that image as itself with the light leak, I think is super powerful. Uh, and it's super me, I think it feels like me, which is great in a photo that I take uh, for myself, I guess. Um, okay, yeah, uh, one that, another one that like is kind of amazing that there's a light leak is this one where Sven is holding up their cup of, it was like apple cider that we were drinking and they're holding it up and they're kind of out of frame, sort of like this. And then there's a light leak coming in exactly where the hand is. And uh, well, that's like a, I don't know, a, like, what's the word? It's like serendipitous maybe, or lucky. 
um, but it feels like magic to me, which is, um, magic is really magical. <sighs> what else can you say about magic? Magic is uh, not real. Well, okay, so France, you know, I, I want to finish this off by, uh, I spoke about Versailles earlier, but I didn't show you any photos of the Palace of Versailles, which if you've played Assassin's Creed Unity is actually where Arno lives. And it's also where Arno's dad dies, which, you know, rest in peace. But um, these things happen, uh, especially in Assassin's Creed games, people get killed all the time and you just have to deal with it as life goes on. So, you know, death is part of life. Where is it? It's a part of living people's lives, but I think that potentially dead people don't care that much about death or, and it's not really part of their life. Um, maybe, but I don't know really. So anyway, the Palace of Versailles, really cool. Lots of gardens. We stopped in this one garden and it's like, it's supposed to be a busy place, right? And it was busy, but in this one garden, there was no one there. And we said, this is crazy. This is a huge field with nobody in it. Why is there nobody in this? We sat down for 10 minutes and realized, oh, there's wasps everywhere. As is the case in all of Europe, apparently in summer, there's just wasps everywhere and they chase you. Apparently, if you go like this, like if you go, blah, 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 you can confuse them. Uh, but I don't know what confusing them really does. I don't know if it makes them go away, but either way, they're scary as hell and they can sting you as uh, demonstrated by my brother Isaac. He, he bit one with his hand, which means he grabbed it and it stung him or it bit him. I don't know what wasps do. Okay, well, that, uh, that takes us to the end section of this uh, video about France photos. I what, closing remarks. So I love shooting on the RB. I'm really disappointed that I don't have any money to shoot more on the RB with. I've been seeing photos all over Amsterdam. That would be perfect. Uh, what does RB stand for? Reading? No, it couldn't be reading books because it's a camera. So like r really big, maybe it's really big. Um, anyway, so I've been seeing lots of RB photos that I want to take, but haven't been able to take them. Luckily, my phone has been doing a good job as well. Shout out to the phone. So um, I'm hoping that with this new job, I'll have a little bit extra cash to pay for some film and pay for some use of the RB because it makes me very happy to use that camera. Um, maybe because it's Bose as well because he gave it to me like that's part of what makes it me really happy about it but the photos are so nice from it much nicer than any other camera that I've used uh, and it makes you feel like um, you know it makes you feel like you've made something amazing every time you, you see one of the photos they're so rich uh, and they look like the amazing photos that you see from the amazing photographers that you've seen or well, that I've seen. Anyway, they look like those photos, which makes you feel like I can do it, <laughs> uh, which you can, which I can. So I like using it and will want to continue to use it for a long time. Goodbye. Thank you for listening to this video and have time. Have, do you have any time left to, do you have, like, did you spend too much time watching this video and do you have time left, I guess, is really the question that we want to be thinking about. Um, yeah, okay, I'll see you next time.